G'day and welcome back to another Ruben Scoots watchmaking video. Today I'm going to share with you the process I used to create the two small pillars that hold up the Torbayong carriage bridge. First, raw steel stock is mounted in a collet in the lathe and is centre drilled to receive the 0.8mm clearance drill. The clearance drill is to clear the non-threaded tips of the two screws which fasten the bridge in place. It is very important that these holes are drilled perfectly on center. Next, I'm going to break the edge of the entry hole with a 120 degree three faceted center drill to provide a nice conical entry for the slightly larger one millimeter tapping drill. Once drilled, a 1.4mm tap is mounted in a pin vise in the tailstock of the lathe. A small amount of cutting grease is applied and the thread is then tapped by hand. Great care must be taken during this sensitive operation to avoid breaking the tap and ruining the part. The first and largest diameter is turned and the pillar is parted off using a piercing saw. Next, the pillar is reversed end for end in the collet and the 1.4mm die is mounted in the tailstock to cut the external thread. This is the thread that will fasten the pillar to the main plate of the watch. The pillar is once again reversed in the lathe and the non-critical cosmetic dimensions of the pillar can be turned. It is important to take very light cuts with a perfectly sharpened and lapped tool as only a very small length of the pillar is held in the collet. This turning operation will give us those pleasing dimensions and proportions so typically found in all of George Daniels watches. You can see the lovely fine swarf leaving the tool there and I will note that the tool has been ground so that all critical features on the pillar can be turned in one operation. Take a glance through the loop and the final shape of the pillar has been achieved. A gas torch is used to heat the pillar to cherry red. It is then plunged vertically into water. This hardens the steel. Here I am using some micron paper glued to a watchmaker's pivot burnisher. This removes the oxide layer and the scaling that was formed during the hardening process. The pillar is reversed and the process is repeated. It is very important when polishing that the sharp corners and edges are not rounded over. Here I am using a small amount of aluminium oxide paste on a piece of wood 
to polish the external threads on the end of the pillar. Now that the scaling has been removed, it is time to temper the steel. This is achieved by heating the pillar on a bed of brass swarf and heating with a gas torch from below. This reduces the hardness of the steel, so it is quite tough and hard, but not so hard that it is brittle and at risk of cracking during assembly and disassembly of the watch movement. For this particular alloy of steel, I am aiming for a mid to pale blue colour to achieve the desired hardness. The pillar is removed from the bed of brass swarf and is once again mounted up in the lathe to be polished again. This time to remove the blue oxide layer formed during the tempering process. Various grades of micron paper are used until the desired finish is achieved. Now it is time to test fit the pillar into the watch movement. The pillar is held in a pin vise and is screwed into the main plate. I can now test fit the tourbillon bridge to ensure everything is aligned and fits together well. The two screws are fastened. And the fit is good. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.